When he finally comes running back to you, how are you going to ensure that this time will be different? If he has no intention of actually changing, then how is anything going to change in your relationship? This is exactly why you need a foolproof strategy to avoid looking like a goof, which is why on today's show, we're going to be discussing the seven most important things to do when a man comes back to you. That way, you can avoid getting played by the same guy twice first things first you need to close your store very important is because you need to shut down everything that you were offering that man when he was your girlfriend i'm specifically talking about two very important things number one I need you to close your legs. You become accustomed to being with that person in an intimate sense. So when he comes back to you after a month, after two months, he still feels familiar to you. It's not, that's not crime. Okay. If you're going to have him come back to you, but actually make a change, then you need to be making sure that you identify that you are not giving him things that he was receiving from you as a wife or girlfriend. But the second thing that you're going to be closing is you're going to close down that wifey treatment meaning when he comes back to you you do not you do not you do not hop right back into giving him the same type of wife and girlfriend treatment that you were giving him when you guys were in an official relationship that is a privilege not a right you were giving him those things because there was commitment in the relationship that was like part of his reward he got more of you because he was committed to you and this relationship you have to understand when he comes back to you after you two have broken up you cannot be giving the same amount you were giving when there was commitment on his part as well all that's going to make him realize is oh i was once her boyfriend and she was giving me wife treatment but that required my commitment now i'm back and i'm not actually technically her boyfriend this isn't technically a relationship you know we're hoping to get back to where we were but if i just say nothing and do nothing i'll continue getting the same wife treatment the same girlfriend treatment and maybe I'll never have to ever commit to her. <gasps> Let me be quiet. Number two, you need to have the ability to pinpoint your problems. This is very important, okay? So I actually want, really want you to be paying attention. It's very important that you first pinpoint what the problems were in the relationship so that you can be thinking in your mind, if he's not on the same page as me, if he doesn't understand that these are the issues that need to be worked on, then we're not going to be getting anywhere in the first place. You won't even be able to identify, yes, you're correct. Those are the adjustments that need to be made. Those were the reasons why we broke up in the first place. So let's say, for example, you're with a guy and part of the reason your relationship ended was because he was constantly going out to the club all the time with his boys he's getting drunk he's off that hen dog he's off the belvedere he's off the casamigos and anytime he's off the casamigos he's got wandering eyes he's going over to ap's with his boys and he's coming back home at 4 a.m let's say that was the reason why your relationship ended he now comes back to you oh i'm so sorry oh i apologize for my behavior i just want to this to work out with us so badly and i want to make sure that we can grow into our relationship and i want to be with you and i miss you and i care about you and i want us to work you have to be thinking in your mind one of the main issues if not the main issue in our relationship was you hanging out with your hoodlum friends going out to the club getting drunk going to ap's and doing nefarious stuff so if you have no solution for that or you even first can't even identify that that was the issue leading to the problems in our relationship and i know that then i automatically know you're not actually here to change anything or adjust anything or build any real relationship that's supposed to end up better in turn then you then know i'm wasting my time entertaining you coming back to me now number three is you gotta stay single listen to me very closely i know this is painful and I know this is not is not going to feel good. You must make it clear to him that you are a single woman. And if a man approaches you and is ready to take you out on a nice dinner date and ready to uh, uh, show you the world and you find him interesting, you're going to allow him to take you out. I want you to be paying attention because this is very important and I want you to do this the right way. It's not because I want you to get him mad and get him to say, okay, I'm gonna date other people. I want you to put him in a position where he says to himself, you are clearly moving forward. If I am not urgent in my response, in my reaction to you moving forward, 
I will lose you. I'm going to have to light a fire under my butt and I'm going to have to get to work making sure I fix and adjust myself to be more in line with what she's looking for because if I don't, she will move on from me. I want you to be paying attention because I didn't say go out and start sleeping with a bunch of other men. I didn't even say you necessarily have to go out on a bunch of dates. I just want you to make it clear to him that he does not automatically get you back in the same position that he had you as his girlfriend by simply saying a couple of words. Number four, you need to gauge his awareness. You say that you want us to go back to where we were in our relationship and you want this to, to work out again and you want to build with me. Cool. Are you even able to identify the reasons that our relationship didn't work out in the first place? Because if you're not able to identify the reasons that our relationship didn't work out in the first place, how can you have any sort of strategy or plan to make an adjustment or make a change so that we don't continue to see the same problems that we were once seeing in our relationship? You pinpointed like in the example I gave that the problem was he goes out with his buddies, he gets drunk with his buddies, and all his buddies do is want to hang out at the club. And every time he goes to the club and gets drunk, everything nefarious and strange happens and he's out till 4 a.m. If he comes back to you and you're asking him questions like, okay, so you say you want to get back, but how are we not going to see the same issues as before? If he then says, well, we don't have to make any changes. I just know that I love you and you know that you love me. And this time it'll be different because we know how much we care about each other. I'm sorry, what? That means nothing. When I go to the club with my boys and I get drunk with my boys, I'm just going to choose not to do the same thing. How are you possibly going to make different choices while doing the exact same thing? An actual strategy would be, I'm, I'm going to stop going to the club with my boys. And when I go out with them, I'm going to go out to places like during the day or that aren't the club. Or I'm going to stop drinking. 99.9% .9 of people are never going to stop drinking. So that's probably not going to be the solution. My favorite car friends, they love cars. Rather than going to the club, we like to meet up with our cars, fix our cars, and I'm going to be switching and hanging out with those friends more instead of my friends that love to go to the club. Those are actual solutions and courses of actions that will put him in a different environment and allow both of you to see a different result. Number five, I never want you to sacrifice or adjust your life for him. This is also really important. And I never, ever, 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 ever want you to forget this because this will ruin everything that you've been doing. I.e., you do not take work off to see him. You do not rearrange your schedule to see him. You don't uh, let go of plans with friends or family to be with him. Nothing. You make no sacrifices and no adjustments for him. I know this sounds very mean and very inconsiderate, but I want you to understand you need to be so mean and so hyper fixated on, look, you really need to show me something here if I'm going to recommit myself back to you. And you need to be of the mindset, I'm giving you absolutely nothing. I know that's painful for you, but... I need to give you absolutely nothing so I can be sure that you're here for the right reasons and you actually have the drive and motivation to build this relationship into something amazing. Because if you don't have that drive and motivation, then you're here for the wrong reasons and you're not even, you won't even be motivated enough to actually make changes or actually make adjustments necessary for our relationship. One, because you don't want to reinvest into a man that is not investing in you. And number two, because you need to be able to observe what are your actual intentions. How do you actually feel about this relationship? Not through your words, but through your actions. If he's telling you, hey, I want you to come over right now because the voice spoke to me from thin air and the voice was so strong in my mind and it told me that we miss each other so much and I know that it's 3 a.m. and I know that I just left the club, but I know how badly... <laughs> I want to see you. He's probably going to add some sniffles and some tears into there, right? But what you need to be doing is you need to say, uh, no, if you want to come back into my life and this voice spoke to you, how badly you want to be with me and how badly you want to be in this relationship with me, I have work tomorrow. The next day after that, I have a plan with my friends. And then the next day after that, I have a, f uh, a family function. So if the voice is speaking to you so loud and clear, and you know so badly that you want to be with me, then you can gladly wait for three days until I'm free. And then you can see me. We can spend some time with each other during the day, not at 3 a.m. Because in reality, the voice that's actually speaking to him is not coming from up here. It's coming from down here in between uh, his legs. And number six, I want you to set an internal 
time limit. This is really important. Okay, listen up. Once again, when you get into these situations where a guy that you were once in a relationship with is now coming back to you and trying to build with you again to build a better relationship. The problem is this process can easily, easily, easily get strung out for a long period of time. And it especially gets strung out when you are offering him a lot of what he already wanted and was looking for from you without the commitment. That's when guys will say, oh, I want this to stay exactly how it is. I am getting what I want and I'm not giving a lot. If I have to give a lot, that's a lot of sacrifice on my part. I don't want to sacrifice a lot on my part. It's going to be one month, two months, three months. And every time, right, he's going to say, yeah, we're working on getting back to where we were. You're going to be like, but we've been working on this for, for a month. No, 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 no. It just, you know, things aren't working out and I got this and work and you got work and life and this. And every single time he's going to continue prolonging it and prolonging it because he knows he already has the same access to you that he would if he was dating you. So why make any changes or switch this up when he knows he can actually sleep with other girls and entertain other girls because you're not even in an official relationship. You're in a situation or in, a, in some confusing state. You're in an it's complicated thing. I really want you paying attention to this part. Okay. I want you uh, hands at your sides, not in your pants, paying attention. I do not want you to tell him of this time limit. I do not want you coming out and telling him you have exactly one week or two weeks or one month to prove to me that you're ready to make a change. You do not want to give him valuable information that will make it easy for him to know exactly what to do, how to do it, and within what time frame to do it so that he can get back the same access to you. Because then you won't be sure if he did it because he actually wanted to do it and because he actually wanted to better this relationship. You'll be left thinking that he did exactly what I wanted him to do because that's what he wanted to do. When in reality, he just did exactly what you wanted to do because he knew that was the way to get what's in between your legs, your squirtle. And then number seven, this is a very funny one and interesting one, avoid nostalgia. I know, hold on. I know that when I give you a strategy on what to do and how to go about this and what to look for, it's all great in theory. But I also know that us speaking logically on a Wednesday afternoon, and I'm sitting here in the screen in front of you, you're not in love with me. So yeah, it's very easy to think to yourself, this is exactly what I'm going to do and exactly how I'm going to do it because we talked about it and me and Thompson talked about it. And when we talked about it, I knew what I was going to do. When you get in front of the guy or you're in a situation where you're with the guy that it, you actually were invested in, you actually slept with, who was actually uh, rearranging your guts, it's going to become a lot more difficult to actively say to yourself, okay, I'm going to stay rational here. I also specifically want you to avoid doing things that you did when you were back in your relationship before this is established as being an official relationship. So for example, if you knew that when you guys were dating and you would love to cook him spaghetti because that was his favorite meal and you, and you cook him spaghetti and stuff like that. And he loves spaghetti and meatballs. He slurps it like a little kid got sauce all over his mouth. And that was your thing that you did. And you actually enjoyed enjoyed being able to give him a plate of spaghetti. It made you feel good. I don't want you doing those things. On top of the fact it's already girlfriend treatment, those are part of the things that will give you nostalgia about the situation that will make you feel like, oh, I loved when we would share these moments together. All of that stuff will make you super nostalgic about the relationship and make you emotionally weak where you think to yourself, oh, I just want to be in this relationship again. I want to be his girlfriend again. And you'll forget the fact that he came back to you, meaning that he was the one that said, I want to be with you. I want to make this work with you. And because he came back to you in that scenario on bend and knee, wanting, wanting to be with you, you have the power. Never forget that. You have the power.